All right. Assume you launch a water balloon off the, of the roof of a building to hit a target on the ground. So can you see, if you think of this, this is your roof, and you launch the water balloon up, hit right there. The flight of the water balloon is represented by the graph provided. Like I just pointed out, this is H of T, um, where H of T represents height, vertical, and the water balloon feet, and T represents time, the horizontal axis is in seven seconds. So this is how, many, how, how long it's been, and this is the height. So height, time, and seconds. So we're going to ask a lot of questions based upon this graph. So how long was a water balloon in the air? Well, if you launched it from this right here, you're in the air, hits the ground right there. Remember, this is time, so it went from 0 to 9 seconds. Oh. So how long was it in the air? 9 seconds. All right. Uh, what height did you release the water balloon? OK, you released the brawler water balloon right there at time 0 which is, looks like it's 27 feet high, so it looks like this is going to be 27 feet high. That is where I released it, right there. If we want to mark that, we can mark that like that. 27, the best I can mark that, Not looking very good, but whatever. At what time would the water balloon reach the highest point? So the highest point you hopefully can see is right there. But it's asking for at what time does it hit that. So the highest point looks like 36 feet high, but that would be 3 seconds. So what time did it? 3 seconds. It's abbreviate seconds. Um, what is the height of the water balloon after 10 seconds? So after 10 seconds, wait, that would be right here. Hmm, <laughs> the height's on the ground. It's, it's splattered already. So we want to keep this parabola going down forever. There'd be negatives. So we would say, what's the height? It's zero. It's broken. Um, it's popped. So what's the height? It's uh, zero feet. It is on the ground, exploded. Um, if you hit the, the top of a tree that is 11 feet tall, at what time did this happen? So we're looking at 11 feet high, right here. Let's go across. That would be, if I hit, the, if I hit a tree sitting right there 11 feet high, then that meant that it would hit at 8 seconds. So after 8 seconds, it hits 11 feet. So that's where it would have hit an 11-foot tall tree. So we would say that that would be at, um, since that's for what time, so that would be 8 seconds. All right, let's keep going. Um, what is the domain and range of the graph? Well, the domain are the x um, values, so that's time. So our time frame is from 0 to 9. And our range looks like it's from 0 feet all the way up to 36 feet. So our domain is going to be from 0, we said from 0 to 9, and that would be in feet. Our range would be from 0 feet to 36 feet. I think I said that earlier wrong. This is 0 to 9, which is in seconds, and this is in feet. So, let's keep going. i got to move this up to make some space. Um, I'll move it down when we get to it, needing it. Okay, it says, on what time interval is a water balloon increasing in height? So, on what time interval is it increasing in height? And it also says, at what rate is a water balloon falling from 5 seconds to 6 seconds? So, from 5 seconds to 6 seconds, what rate is it falling? And for what interval is it decreasing? Is the height decreasing? So let's take a look at this. Let's go back to the graph. So where is it decreasing or meaning falling? So aren't we falling from 3 to 9 seconds? Okay, so we're decreasing from 3 to 9 seconds. And then also said, at what rate are you falling from 5 to 6? So let's look at this. At 5, we're right there. At 6, we're right there. So if we do the slope right there, we find the slope, it looks like we're over 1, and we went from 32 to 27. So from 32 to 27 looks about a 5. Now, is that negative or positive? Well, you should notice it's a negative. Rise over run would be 5 over 1. So it looks like we have a negative slope of 5. So let's write this stuff in. 
and we push it up, we looks like for what time it was decreasing. I remember seeing that it was decreasing from um, three seconds until nine seconds. We don't have brackets because if you think about it, um, at three seconds it's at the top and at nine seconds it's splattered at the ground so it's not decreasing at either of these. And what rate is a water balloon falling? Well we calculated that above as a negative five feet per second. Make sure you have units on it but it's feet per second because it's feet up over time seconds. That's rates are always in a fractional kind of unit usually because feet per seconds are that's just kind of how rates kind of kind of roll. All right, let's push this back down so we can answer the rest of the problems here. All right. That looks like make sure we notice that's a bracket. I forgot about that. It looks kind of ugly. Just make sure that was a bracket there because domain and range in this problem are closed intervals. Anyways, let's go to 9. Write an equation for this graph on the fol in the following forms. Describe in detail what benefits each form gives to the context of the problem. So vertex form. Well, vertex form needs a vertex. So we see the vertex is right there. And if you look at it, the A value, when you go over 1, I went down 1 over 1, down 1. So I know my A value is negative 1. If I know my vertex, I can put that all together to get an equation. So H of T is going to be A is negative 1. And then I have T. And let me see, since that's a positive 3 um, on the vertex, I'm going to do the opposite of that. So we see negative 3. And I have squared. And my height is 36. So if you look at this, my vertex is 3, 36, and it's upside down at an A value of negative 1 because I went over 1, down 1. All right, there would be the vertex form. Now, what benefit does this have? Well, this one benefits us with the vertex. So it easily gives us the vertex or the maximum. So what does it give us? It gives us the max, the maximum value real quick. So that's what's kind of nice about that one. Now, in order to get to other forms, there are different ways of doing it, but I'm just going to convert um, this form right here to all the other forms. There are other ways to kind of approach it and think about it. So let's, let's push this up so we have some space here. So I have space to do all those. Here we go. So if I want intercept form, to get intercept form, um, it's a little bit more complicated. I'm going to go standard form first. To get standard form, I'm going to need to convert this. So what I'm going to do here is to convert this, I first have to foil this piece. I have to realize it's t minus 3 times t minus 3. So I'll probably need a little bit more space. Let's push that up some more. So here we go. I have something that will look like this. Let's work it down here. I have negative 1, and I have t minus 3, t minus 3, and plus 36. And if I foil this out, I get t squared minus 6t plus 9. I skipped some steps. I kind of did foil a little bit quick there. Okay, then I got to distribute this negative in. So when I distribute that negative in, boom, 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 I have negative t squared plus 6t minus 9 plus 36. Now, if we combine the, uh, these two right here, it looks like we're going to have negative t squared plus 6t plus 27. All right, that looks pretty good. Let's, let's verify this. Shouldn't this give us our y-intercept? Isn't that what it gives us, our y-intercept or the roof of the, the uh, building? So it's 27 the roof. Let's look. If we look at the problem... Oh yeah, look right here. 27 is the roof of the building where we started at zero. So cool, that verified that we did it right. And also it tells us, in context, what does it help us? Well, this particular problem, what it gives us is the y-intercept, or the roof. For this situation, it's the roof height. Okay, so it's y-intercept or the roof height. That's what this one gave us. So. Like this one gave us a maximum, all in one is vertex. 
This one gives us the roof height or the y-intercept. Now to the intercept form, we have to factor this. So this is going to be another kind of working because you can get to intercept form from this, but it's more complicated. Let's just factor this. So in a factoring, I never want a negative a value. So let's pull out the GCF of negative 1 out. That leaves us t squared minus 6t minus 27. All right, now we're going to factor this. So I put negative 27 on top and negative 6 on the bottom. And it looks like that would be negative 9 and 3. All right, so it looks like I have a negative 1 here. And then I'll have t minus 9 and t plus 3. That looks like my vertex, my intercept form. Now, remember from intercept form, the opposite of these, or when these equal 0, is at 9 and at negative 3. So if we look at the graph here, see the graph how it hit here at 9? And if we look back at it, if this graph kept going down, could you imagine it hitting over here at negative 3? That does look right. So it hits at 9 and negative 3. So this should be pretty close because what does intercept form give us? It gives us these zeros or where it hits the ground. So what benefit this is would have? It is the zeros or where it hits the ground, which I don't space the right hits the ground. So let's just put zeros for this one. So hopefully you can kind of see how each format gives us something beneficial, and we can check it with each format to make sure we're on the right track. Do you notice how all of them have a negative 1 for A value? That should follow through through all of them.